Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. Today I'm revisiting my Pen BBS 492 Magnetic Piston Filler. I bought this one, number 82, back in January. The 492 finally showed up as a pre-order item on Etsy in March and people have just this week started receiving their 492s from that batch. I was lucky enough to be one of the first people to receive this new design from Pen BBS, the Year of the Rat 2020, with the newfangled magnetic filling system back in February. Of course, being your intrepid pen reporter, reviewer, and on-camera ink daredevil, it was incumbent upon me to take the pen to pieces and explore all aspects of this new pen. You can watch that original review from February 2020 right here. Somewhere in my experiments, I must have tweaked something to make the piston no longer work for me. I could not get this piston, which attaches to our cap like that, I could not get it to move in the barrel with the magnet attached. It would kind of break the seal as I moved it down the barrel and... Uh, and the piston wouldn't move. Then someone suggested getting a stronger magnet. So I did. I went and got this little magnet from Lee Valley and I attached it to the top. So now, and it fit not rather nicely actually, so now I've got double the magnetic strength that was already there, but that didn't help. Then I tried burning Tabunga with a mighty fire, but it didn't help. Well, what do you want? Come quick, please help us. We cannot kill the Tabunga. We burned Tabunga with a mighty fire, but it didn't help. It came out alive. Please come before it kills us all. You know where the Tabunga is now? Good, you two wait outside. So I took the piston out and tried it as an eyedropper. It leaked. Even though I silicone greased that end plug quite a bit, it still leaked through the bottom within an hour. I continued to write with this pen as it doesn't need refilling for months, this capacity of a little over 3 milliliters. Then Chris Rep 52 revisited his 492 when he received a second one a couple of weeks ago. In that video he suggested turning the barrel while filling it to make that piston slide around inside and make it slide a little bit easier. Plus, I received a lovely handwritten note from Chris, and he taped four silicone O-rings to the letter. He suggested trying a different O-ring on the piston. That might work. That was truly generous. Chris, thank you very much. I've been waiting for my pen parts pack from Pen BBS for weeks now, as I needed a new O-ring to fix my 456. The O-ring in this had become shredded. Before I replaced the O-ring in that piston, to give that a try, I thought I'd give Chris's spin the barrel technique a little bit of a try. So I cleaned out the pen, turned on my video camera, and this is what I discovered. Okay, I don't know whether I'm going to use this video or not, but I thought I would video the process of me taking my Pen BBS 492 apart and putting it back together again with one important change. Uh, so I thought I'd document this a little bit first of all, but I got a really nice letter in the mail from my friend Chris here in a wonderful shimmering ink and attached to the letter uh, was three o-rings that I've been waiting for uh, one of the o-rings I actually needed from my parts package was because my uh, 456, the O-ring on this sort of shredded and I haven't been able to use this pen since and of course I love my 456 and I didn't really want to steal an O-ring from another pen um, and the there are a number of different types of O-rings and I noticed that in uh, the four that Chris gave me there are uh, a couple, there's the thick one, 
they're about the same diameter, but uh, one of them, I don't know if you can see this, I put it on my, on my fingers. So one of them is thinner than the other. They're the, about the same diameter, but this one's thicker. And I put that on the 456, and it's the perfect size. And then I thought, okay, well, the reason he sent me those was because he wanted me to try to fix my 492 that I was having difficulty with. And let me sort of discuss what the problem was with my 492. The 492, of course, has this magnet that fits right in there. And the idea is that the magnet on the outside of the pen will pull this down and do the ink thing. And Chris has a wonderful uh, video where a follow-up video on the 492 where he shows you put the magnet against here and you spin the barrel as you go and that really helps the process only I discovered when I tried that I had an issue and it might have been because of how I took my my 492 apart when I first did the the video review on it let's get that magnet out there we go let's take a good look at this magnet section here there are three parts to this one two three four parts to this I get my inky fingers out of the way if I can so there's the magnet right there there's the little piston that holds the piston ring the all-important piston ring this is the original piston ring i haven't changed it and then there's a screw that holds the whole thing together so that um, i would think the idea is that you could either replace the magnet or you could replace this piston if anything happened in the future now i never cranked on that screw at all when I was taking my pen apart. I never tried to get these parts apart, uh, but I noticed that they did spin. This part spun around, the magnet part spun around, and so they were two separate pieces. It didn't come unscrewed, but it spun. So it was loose from that screw. So I've taken some photos of what I did. I took, the, uh, I took a screwdriver, and this was easier said than done because the screwdriver wants to keep attaching to the magnet. You can't get it to the center. You have to force it to the center of that screw. And I unscrewed it and I took it apart into pieces. So that center bolt, the magnet, and the, uh, the, the uh, acrylic piston itself. And then I put a little dab of crazy glue just on the inside ring of that a little bolt right there and screwed the whole thing back together. There's no glue here. Um, I made sure that the only glue that I had, it was just a very tiny amount to keep that magnet from spinning from that bolt. And now it doesn't spin. And now I'm hoping when I put this thing back together again, there we go. I put that magnet back in there like that. And I'm going to have to silicone grease this whole thing up again and replace the little rat plug, not rat bun, rat plug, right there like that. And that's ready to go. I've got to clean out my section. Uh, I'm going to use the same color, but I'm going to take the opportunity to clean that out, make sure that O-ring is siliconed, make sure there's silicone on the inside of this. And, uh, and then I'm going to refill it and we'll see whether it works. Okay, so I put the pen back together again. Um, I cleaned it all out. I wasn't able to get the nib and feed out of that collar. This one's just particularly stiff and I didn't want to break it before I was able to see whether I fixed it. Um, so if I fix this, then I can go ahead and break that. It's broken. What? Oh, nice job, man hands. <laughs> I got a pen parts piece coming 
soon anyway, so I could probably break that and put it, uh, put a new collar and feed into it. But for the test, so now I've siliconed all of this up really well, and I'm going to turn it while I'm moving it. And look at that works like a charm just like Chris said it would I think it even works when I'm just pulling it you sort of lose it a little bit if you just try to pull it without turning it but turning it actually makes it a lot easier so let's see whether I can actually fill this up one of the issues is not having enough ink and whether you can get that piston down far enough to be able to attach to the magnet when the nib is in the ink. We will find out. Ink acquiring minds want to know. Will Falcon Crest come down Dallas and Dynasty in the fight for number one? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. So let's see whether I can actually get. See, the problem is to get that down there. Now I can't get at the magnet. So the issue is being able to tilt this at an angle and attach that magnet at the same time and drop some ink. Now I'm not spinning it at this point, but you can see I'm getting a really good fill. all the way to the top and without having to take that little plug out of the back of that pen and of course in doing that I made even a more of a mess but I was anxious to see whether that would work and it worked perfectly I even got the nib on so that it lines up with the clip. Those that are OCD among you will appreciate my dilemma when it comes to little things like that. All right, hands in the air, vertically. Both arms should be parallel to each other. You, fill this bag with clean, unmarked bills. But first, fix that notepad so it's at a right angle with the corner of your desk. And tap that pile of receipts against a flat surface so they're not sticking out haphazardly. You know what? Forget about the money. Everybody grab a broom. We are straightening this place up. Well, that's interesting. So I think I will add this. I'm going to do a revisit to this pen after I've used it for about a month. And uh, we'll look at some of the issues I've had with it. And we'll look at how well it writes. So I'm going to attribute my piston issue with my 492 to user error. Or at least stupid user interference with a perfectly working pen to make it not work, only to discover said user had screwed up the pen and had to disassemble said pen months later to repair the unforced error in a previously flawed working pen error. Because all you of Earth are idiots. You see? You see? You're stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. That's all I'm taking from you. Get back here, you devil! It's because of men like you that all must be destroyed. I wonder if there's an acronym for that. So let's do some writing with this now flawless pen while we're here. So this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Pen BBS. Four nine two magnetic piston filler. And it has a fine steel nib. And the ink is a Roshizuku Konpeki. Let's check the wetness on this pen. As you can see, it's relatively wet for a uh, fine pen BBS nib. I have done some work on this pen. I flossed it a bit, and I actually flossed this on camera. So you can see that video 
uh, either here or here. I'm upside down backwards, so I can't tell. So let's write with it. This is just a marvelous pen. Writes beautifully, extremely well balanced in the hand. It doesn't post deeply enough to be usable that way. And that magnetic cap adds a lot of weight to that cap so that it backs weights, it back weights the pen quite severely. Uh, and let's try some reverse writing here. Not so much on this pen. And some quick writing. Pretty good. So, what's the moral of this story? The moral of this particular story is to let your intrepid YouTube pen reviewer screw up his $100 fountain pen so you don't have to. And thanks go out to Chris Rapsaic for his help in solving my piston issue with this pen. I have stopped the magnet from the spinning. There is no charge. I have fixed your doorbell from the ringing. There is no charge. Thank you. And the case is solved. Until we meet again and the case is solved. Oh, an idiot. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.